everyone. My name is Ted Harris. I am with the Pennsylvania Petroleum Association. We would like to welcome you to our monthly webinar series, which takes place the first Tuesday of each month. Uh, before we get started today, I would like to encourage you to ask questions during the webinar. And the way that you can do that is there, you will see a question feature, uh, which you're going to have to type your questions. You're going to be on mute the entire time. But we encourage questions. We encourage collaboration. Um, depending on the question, I'll, I'll either uh, interrupt Chris here and, and ask him to, to answer it, or we'll hold off until the end of the, the presentation. But again, we, we encourage you to, to interact via the question feature. Um, before, at, at this point, excuse me, at this point, uh, I would like to introduce our presenter, which is Chris Brablick, who is the Senior Director of Marketing for Tank Utility. Uh, Chris will be, pre will be presenting the third annual Delivered Fuel Customer Survey Report. Chris, I'm going to pass it off to you at this time. Well, thanks so much, Ted. And uh, I'm really excited to be here today. Um, you know, we, we had um, some research that we did um, this past year um, around some of the uh, your customers and kind of what they're looking for uh, when they're looking at delivered fuel. And I'm really excited to share the data today. Um, as Ted said, if you have questions as I'm going through uh, any of these uh, data points and some of the, the things that we pulled from the data, uh, please ask those questions. We'll, we'll try to address those as they come up. Um, if not, we'll, we'll definitely answer them at the end. Um, so I'm going to go um, pretty quickly through this, but you know, please have questions. Um, I'll also provide Ted with a link to the full survey report so you can see kind of all the data, all the questions that we asked um, you know, for your own use. Please feel free to share it with your team. So when we um, kind of started to look at this, this is our third year of doing a survey to deliver fuel customers. So, um, you know, when we did the survey, we had about uh, a little over uh, 450 plus uh, delivered fuel customers fill out the survey. Um, the survey was, uh, you know, somewhere around, you know, 30 to 40 questions. Um, so it, it was a, a decent lift. So getting that much um, was actually, um, you know, pretty good, um, pretty indicative of, of what we're looking for. Um, one thing to also note, um, as I know um, with the association, is a majority were propane customers. So we did have some heating oil customers um, uh, also fill it out, but a uh, majority were propane customers. Now, when I say that, um, uh, a few things to consider here is there, that means that there's going to be a few areas areas of this uh, that I think will be way more pertinent uh, to, to propane customers. But overall, I think a lot of the insights should um, be really, really useful to anybody that delivers fuel. Um, and so when we really kind of looked at this, you know, we really focused on a few things um, about understanding that um, delivered fuel customer a little bit better. Uh, we wanted to know kind of what their behavior was when they uh, found suppliers, when they bought um, uh, fuel. Uh, we wanted to kind of look at, uh, you know, what, uh, how often they stay with suppliers um, and kind of the, the, the retention around that. Uh, and we're also kind of looking at what their opinions were on services and any changes there. And sorry, we have some, uh, a little bit of, of a loud trucks on the street here. So uh, bear with me. Now, when we look at um, the overall group, uh, this is kind of a good, in interesting mapping of kind of where people were from. Um, in terms of uh, uh, the, the people that filled out the survey, uh, and also kind of a look at the types of customers. So we kind of broke it out with will call, um, automatic customers, and you know folks that that didn't provide that information. So um, you know, as you can see, we kind of uh, have it um, across the U.S. Um, and you know, a, a pretty uh, good uh, complement of uh, people on will call versus people on automatic. So what are we trying to, to learn here? Well, you know, we kind of focus on four main areas, as I said. Uh, we wanted to look at acquisition. So how customers uh, choose their suppliers, how do they find them, how do they decide on those? Uh, second, we wanted to look at retention. Um, so why do uh, customers stay uh, with their suppliers, but also why do they leave? Um, and so we have some data on that. We wanted to look at pricing. You know, what were customers willing to pay for fuel and services? And if there was any things that they, they wish they had uh, when it came to uh, paying for fuel and, and paying for that service. 
And then last but not least, we wanted to look at kind of the communication, you know, how customers want to communicate with their fuel supplier, what are good ways that we interact and engage uh, with those delivered fuel customers. And so this will be kind of the basis of some of those questions and some of the insights that we have. So when we start started, we want to kind of uh, uh, understand a little bit about how customers are actually finding their suppliers. Um, you know, is it through you know some uh, advanced marketing campaigns? Is it um, you know through mailers and anything else? Um, what we saw uh, when we asked kind of how you found your fuel supplier is a large majority were from a previous relationship and some some uh, capability. Now you had probably ask uh, you know any uh, fuel uh, fuel marketer and they'll they'll mention referrals being um, the best source of new customers. And again, we saw that true in the data, right? we 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 definitely saw that. Um, but we also saw you know repeat customers when it when they were previously a customer of that or customers that inherited a house or inheriting a building that was already served and already had a tank from that supplier. And so previous relationship is a really, really key point here. The one other thing that we saw that, that was also really interesting is when we thought uh, saw about um, customers that didn't have a previous relationship, web search was by far the biggest. And so, you know, when we kind of look at this data, the two things that I, I would just say, you know, and, and start thinking about, and you probably already have, is um, for referral programs, how do we actually make that something that's sustaining? Um, and how do we get referrals at every stage of the process? So, you know, uh, when we make a good delivery, are we asking for referrals? Um, you know, I think most businesses and, and most people, um, you know, probably we don't ask for referrals enough um, of our customers. And so building a program that allows you to systematically do that um, can be a real boon for your business, especially as you're looking at new customers. I think the second part that's really important here is what, what is your search presence on Google? So if somebody is searching for um, you know, heating oil delivery or propane delivery um, in your region uh, on Google, are you, are you listed? right? Are you appearing on that Google map? What are the reviews look like um, for your business? Um, I think, you know, having good reviews on your uh, local listing on Google um, is going to be really, really important. Um, so how do we get more of those reviews? Again, I, I think you, know, you should really be focusing on how do you, how do you uh, make those asks um, throughout the process of your customers? Because more than, uh, more than likely, your customers are willing to um, have that uh, conversation and give a good review if you ask, uh, and you've done something well. The other question uh, we really had was, uh, why are customers choosing a, a fuel supplier? Um, I, we, will, we all know that um, fuel uh, is a competitive uh, pricing market. Um, and, and most likely, you know, um, especially for will call customers, they're getting multiple prices. And so, you know, when we asked, we, we asked uh, uh, across a number of things and we actually saw very similar results to uh, past years. Um, price was uh, number one uh, and then relationship or customer service was number two. Um, so, so again, this, this fell into uh, what we expected. Um, and, you know, I think just in general, um, you know, if we're thinking about kind of what makes us competitive against everybody else, you know, obviously pricing, um, but, you know, there's probably other service, uh, service packages and ways to demonstrate our service um, that could be really, um, you know, interesting as we um, also give, give our pricing to, to potential customers. And so that's a really kind of where we look at uh, customer acquisition. Um, but then we also wanted to take a look at, well, why do people stay? Um, or why, why do people leave their fuel supplier? And so when we think about it, um, you know, one thing we first asked was we wanted to kind of just know and level set the delivered fuel experience uh, next to other common experiences that the, uh, those customers might have. And so we asked them to rank the fuel uh, delivery experience compared to other retail experiences from you know, shopping on Amazon and uh, you know, e-commerce to consumer electronics to 
your ISP providers or, or wireless providers with Verizon, AT&T, uh, or other utilities that you do. And overall, for the second straight year, fuel delivery was the second rated, um, you know, behind e-commerce. So overall, I, I think, you know, we're doing a pretty great job um, of building really good relationships with our customers, um, and they appreciate the good service. Um, you know, I think this is a really positive thing for the industry. Um, and, um, you know, overall, I, I think that's a really happy result. Um, the second question we asked was, well, how long do you actually stay with your current supplier? Um, and we just wanted to get a kind of understanding of once you had a customer, what was the lifetime value of that customer? Um, and, and how many years, how many gallons could we, we do from that? And what we saw is that, you know, your customers uh, are very, very sticky. Um, you know, uh, seven years on average, um, uh, a, cu a customer has been with their current supplier and, you know, very uh, rarely do they switch, right? In the last 10 years, it's about two, um, two suppliers that they've had on average. And so, you know, I think the, the, the big thing here um, is that, you know, most customers will stay unless you give them a reason to leave. Um, and we'll get a little bit into the, the reasons why somebody might uh, leave a, a fuel supplier, but, you know, just in general, um, you know, how can we be transparent with current customers? How can we highlight the good service that we have? Um, and, um, you know, get them uh, with a little skin in the game with more referrals. Um, so this goes to, as we're looking through this, right, where we're seeing that uh, we have a really sticky customer, um, but there are customers that switch. And so when we think about uh, why customers might switch, um, we asked them a, a few questions, right? We said, hey, was it a run out? Um, was it that, that somebody moved and uh, they, they ultimately had it? Uh, was it because of price? Um, was it uh, that they got a recommendation of a better fuel supplier um, or other, right? Um, you know, as we kind of looked um, through that. Um, and, you know, if we're looking at just this, right, we would probably say, well, hey, they left for a cheaper solution. But what we know is if we look back at uh, how loyal customers are, you know, they're, they're actually pretty loyal. So, you know, the one other thing we asked in coordination with this question was, you know, well, hey, do you trust your fuel supplier to give you the best price? And a majority said yes, right? About two thirds said, yep, I, I trust that. And so, you know, I, I think the, the big thing here is, well, what we often look at price as that, that thing of, of why uh, customers leave. And yes, the price has to be reasonable um, with that. But, you know, most people are not checking price um of their uh, of their fuel supplier and they trust their fuel supplier to provide that and so they're not checking price unless you give them a reason to hey chris yep i got i got i got a couple questions here in the last yeah. um few minutes uh can you clarify on the on on some of the stats you're talking about right now are, are you looking at this from a holistic perspective or, or are you breaking this down from a will call versus automatic delivery customer yeah, that's that's a good question. So um, we haven't broken it down by we'll call automatic. Um, so this is our full data set. Um, uh, if that's something of interest, uh, we can definitely do that, um, and I, I can provide that data uh, after after the webinar. Um, we will have one stat I think um, later on on kind of the difference between we'll call and and that we that we found. Uh, but you know, just in general, this is kind of a full data set for the most part. Okay, and then is any of this broken down from an age segment? No, um, that's a good question. So that's something, uh, the feedback we've gotten from um, folks uh, just in general. Um, it is something that we will include in next year's um, survey. We didn't ask that demographic information uh, in this survey, uh, but it's definitely something that we have on our list. And um, if there's any other suggestions on other things they would wanna see from a breakdown standpoint, um, yeah, we're, we're all ears. 
Okay. And last question for, for now, and this was on the front end of your presentation. Uh, can you clarify 450 people were surveyed and only 22 responded, or 450 people were surveyed and, and only 22 of them had heating oil? Yeah, it was only 22 had heating oil. So the rest were propane. Gotcha. So, uh, so 450 results and, and a small portion of that is heating oil customers. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Great. Um, yeah. And if you have other questions, please, please have at it and jump in, Ted, uh, with anything you see. Will do. Thank you. Great. Cool. Um, so just in general, um, you know, so we were kind of looking at price, right? So if you just look at this uh, question, you think, hey, price is by far the biggest determinant for why uh, people switch. Um, but we also know that they really trust their fuel supplier. Um, it's a pretty good experience from what we saw before. Um, and so, you know, I think just in general, as we kind of look at this, um, one thing we saw with why um, uh, people switch in the other category was most of it was service related right um they felt either like the the fuel supplier lied to them or was trying to take one over on them uh they had a bad experience with a driver or a dispatcher or something to that effect and so you know i think in general if you're looking at this i i think the the big thing here is you know good service in and of itself is a is a retention policy um and most people are not super price conscious when it comes to it, as long as they're, they're, they feel like they're getting the service they, they ultimately um, deserve um, around that. One other question we asked and, and so uh, is around net promoter score. So if uh, you don't know net promoter score, net promoter score is a metric used um, for uh, customer success programs. Uh, it's meant to measure the loyalty of customers and kind of give you a really quick, easy way to show how many of your uh, customers are uh, promoters of your brand uh, and how many are detractors of your brand. And so uh, really the, the, the only question that's asked here is uh, what, uh, would, how likely would you be to recommend a uh, friend or family to our company, right? Um, and then they give a score from zero to 10. If you're a nine or 10, you are considered a promoter. If it's listed seven or eight, you're considered passive. So you're not included in the, the formula. Uh, if you're zero through six, you're a detractor. And then usually there's a question of why um, after the fact as well. So. We basically just asked this of, of um, on, on a few different scales, uh, which you know we'll share now. Uh, but again, it's a it's a really quick way to kind of get a um, a finger on the pulse of your customers and kind of where they're at when it comes to uh, not only you know them potentially referring you, but also just you know how you're doing from a service perspective. And so here's kind of a, a really interesting look. So we basically uh, took every um, uh, every respondent, uh, looked at um, their, um, we asked them, uh, you know, how likely would they be to recommend their fuel supplier to friends and family? Um, and here is here are the results when it came to region by region of you know those that were promoters, those that were you know kind of um, uh, passive um, in in their um, you know area and those that were below average, so they were detractors. And so when we kind of look at that, uh, you know, this is a kind of just an interesting look at you know the different areas that uh, are in and um, you know their, their experience with with fuel delivery. What we also saw and what we asked about was you know does uh, monitoring also help? Right. Um, and where we were interested with that is, you know, is there like a transparency with having a mobile app and, and things like that, that that improves that experience? Um, and what we saw is that there were jumps in that experience, um, you know, as you included, you know, a monitoring service to uh, make sure you don't run out. Um, and also when you provided a mobile app that gave tank level. 
And so, you know, what we saw is that the overall NPS for fuel suppliers is pretty good at 27, um, but it did jump up a little bit when, when provided greater transparency. And to kind of give you context, um, here's um, what we saw with other industries. So if you're kind of looking at, you know, fuel suppliers, um, you know, it's, um, you know, right around, um, you know, kind of life insurance and things like that. Um, you know, if we kind of jump up with, um, you know, having a little bit more of a transparent delivery experience, um, you know, it, it definitely rises with other industries. All right. Um, one other thing um, we started looking at is, um, you know, and, and this goes to the question that we had before around we'll call customers and and kind of uh, speaking around those, um, you know, seeing if we had a subset. We did uh, look at a few subsets around that, um, but if you're curious about more, feel free to reach out afterwards. Um, but one thing we did ask was, well, how full is your tank when you call to get it refilled to will call customers? And what we saw is, um, and then we also asked a question, which was, uh, have you run out of fuel before? Um, and what was really interesting is, um, and, and probably what you would actually see, and you probably have all the, uh, these customers, is that um, the will call customers that uh, ultimately had runouts were calling way later, right? They're calling when they're at 19%, whereas the ones that never had runouts were calling at right around 29, 30%. So, you know. I think just in general, what we see there, will call is always an issue, um, especially when it comes to efficiency and just planning out your day and dispatching. Um, but we've seen um, a lot of uh, marketers start to have more we call programs. So really trying to get will calls on kind of a more consistent delivery um, and trying to keep out competitors um, when you already have their tanks, especially when you don't own that tank. Um, and so that basically is just them um, keeping them on a, a, a schedule um, and giving them a call saying, hey, you know, I think you, you might be at, um, you know, might need a delivery soon. Can we put you on your uh, on the schedule? Cool. So we talked about, uh, you know, how customers are finding uh, their fuel supplier um, and a lot of it's through referrals and um, web search. We talked about a little bit about retention and how we have a really sticky customer. And that's really because we're actually delivering a really great uh, experience when it comes to delivered fuel. Um, and so, you know, when we're talking about that, um, we, we also want to look at that. Um, we know that price is a, a really big contingent on how um, customers actually think about that fuel supplier, but we also know that experience in, impacts it as well. Um, but we wanted to really dig a little bit more into price, see uh, about the types of pricing options that, that customers were actually looking for, and also uh, what other services we could provide. Um, so just in general, um, you know, we first wanted to look at um, how often someone checks price, right? So, um, you know, to that point before when we were talking about retention and, and people leaving for price, most people trust a fuel supplier to give them the best price. And so we wanted to know, well, how often do you actually check fuel prices? Um, whether that's heating oil, propane, uh, the area. And we saw that all customers, it was about 26% uh, did it every time or said they did it every time they needed delivery. And then a majority of them either did it not at all um, or once once a year, right? So I think just in general, when we think about pricing, you know, people are, are less apt to check pricing um, than, than we'd probably expect. Um, where we did see a little bit of change between automatic and will call was um, in that will call customers were way more likely to check it every time. Um, this is probably because they, they want more control over that delivery cycle. They probably own their own tank, which, um, you know, just in general, um, you know, makes it so that they can actually dictate those pricings. Uh, but just know that your will call customers, again, are, are going to be checking pricing a little bit more often than 
than your automatic, which makes sense. Um, and again, you know, we, we've seen a we call strategy be, be really, really successful in preempting that conversation. So, you know, if they call you most likely than, or more likely than not, they're also calling somebody else. But if you call them, um, they might not even think about calling somebody else. They, they might just, uh, get, get included in your next delivery, their delivery dispatch. One other thing we really wanted to kind of look at is just, you know, what what would you want to see um, from a pricing standpoint if you're a customer uh, for delivered fuel? Uh, and we wanted to know if there was any other attractive uh, pricing options um, when we do that. Um, and, and what we saw is that, you know, I think in general, um, pretty much everybody's doing variable price during delivery, right? You get a delivery, you get charged whatever that price is, which makes sense, right? Uh, it's easy. It's how the uh, industry has done it um, for years. But we were wondering if what would the appetite be for other things, right, and other types of pricing methods, um, you know, uh, when we looked at that. So we looked at, you know, fixed price through year, um, a fixed monthly payment. Um, so that's kind of more pay as you go um, and, and things like that. Um, annual prepay. Um, you know, I, I think um, what's interesting is that a lot of customers are willing to put uh, money up up front, um, potentially, and true up at the end, um, you know, if that, that makes sense. So, you know, I think just in general, um, you know, I think the, the big takeaway here is not that um, we should be shifting everything around. I think the model works pretty well today, um, but there might be an appetite for other types of pricing options, methods that um, uh, customers might be willing to to try, so it might be worth being a little bit creative on the pricing side. Um, one other question we had there uh, when we were looking at it was, we were looking at other we were looking at other services we could provide. And um, one to see, you know, what, what that is. Um, you know, obviously we're a tank monitoring company, and so we were curious on, on the tank monitoring side. Um, and what we saw was actually really interesting, right? Um, that, that we saw that uh, about 61% of all customers were willing to pay for a tank monitoring service in some capacity. Um, now, most chose that, that lower price, uh, which would cover, you know, tank fees and things like that, um, but that was interesting. Um, the one other thing we also wanted to take a look at is, well, could there be any more incentives um, that we could provide that would be interesting, um, you know, to customers, and would they be willing to pay a little bit more? And so while we did this in the, the light of tank monitoring, um, I think the other thing about, around this is that this could be used in other instances, right? Um, and um, you could also, you know, see an impact whether that's trying to win a new customer um, or other services you provide. So, you know, we looked at both a price per gallon discount. Um, so, you know, hey, w w if you uh, subscribe to our tank mining service, we'll give you five cents, uh, one to five cents off uh, price per gallon. Um, we've actually seen marketers do this um, and be really, really successful um, with customers that do it. They feel like they're getting something. Um, uh, back and you're getting the efficiency savings because now you know what's on their t uh, in their tank. Um, and then I think the other thing is a no run out guarantee. Um, and so what we saw is that in general, um, no run out guarantees, probably you could command a little bit more um, when it came to kind of the services, um, but both had a, a, a pretty positive impact on your ability to charge um, when, um, you know, adding a, a few small incentives um, to customers around that. Now, the big thing here, I, and, you know, I think is the, the logistics challenge of charging different customers, uh, different things, and, and understanding, you know, who, who are subscribing to these services. Um, and, and so I totally understand, um, you know, some of the, those uh, logistic uh, challenges around that. But, you know, really interesting about, you know, other ways to uh, make, make customers feel like they're getting value.
So we talked a little bit about uh, acquisition. Uh, we talked a little bit about retention. Uh, we wanted to take a look at, at pricing and, and what was that impact of, of different pricing um, on uh, a customer's ability to not only check pricing, um, but also uh, to subscribe to services around pricing. Um, the one last thing that we really wanted to look at is communication. Um, you know, as um, you know, we've seen in, in Delivered Fuel, you know, it's a little bit different than any other utility I might use, right? Um, you know, I, I'm paying uh, per delivery versus, you know, a per month or, or a subscription. Um, and just in general, our communication with folks is a, is a little bit different. Um, one thing, and this is probably the biggest change we saw from year to year um, with our surveys, was that we asked what your preferred method of communication was with your fuel supplier. And in 2018, uh, phone was, was still king, right? With email trailing, um, but we saw a huge shift um, in uh, phone versus email. Um, what this could be um, is a few things. Like first, I think the, the person asking around demographic information, I wish I had it. Um, for this, right? I, I think there's probably uh, something to be said there. Um, I, I think also, I think we, we've been kind of trained to get communications um, uh, through email versus phone calls. Um, you know, uh, and, and that's probably progressively um, going to be the case. And so I think just in general, um, you know, when we see this, getting emails for your customers uh, obviously depends on kind of, uh, you know, age brackets and things like that around that. But you know, it probably is a good way to start, you know, using a MailChimp or some sort of email communication platform uh, to capture emails, store emails, and then communicate um, with with uh, folks around their uh, the deliveries that you make and also, you know, other uh, services that you provide. The other question we had was, well, how often do you hear from your fuel supplier, right? Um, you know, if we're um, thinking about it, and again, you know, to that point where we might be making, you know, two to three deliveries to a customer, right, a year. And so do they just hear from us two to three times a year, um, if that? And so, you know, we, we asked, um, you know, how often does your fuel supplier communicate with you? And really, you know, the majority said once a year. Um, and so what we see there is that there is a little bit of a missed opportunity to communicate with our customers or let them know that we're, you know, we're, we have their back, we're going to keep them warm, um, we're going to do that. And also, I think especially with will call customers, um, you know, it, it's a potential of a loss of a customer if, if we're not top of mind when they're thinking about getting that next delivery. So, you know, I think just in general, um, you know, a big, you know, the takeaway there is, you know, emails, um, I would definitely capture them. Um, you know, if we have, you know, a mobile app, um, you know, the tank monitoring app, you should, uh, if you have tank monitors, you should uh, give them that mobile app um, just so that they, they can do that. Um, what we've seen with that mobile app is, is about 72% uh, of people uh, that have the mobile app will actually check it once a week during the winter. It's kind of addictive, um, and if your logo is on that mobile app, which it should be, um, you know, it, it's a really good way to uh, give uh, that customer transparency and feel good about you serving them. Um, you know, with that, um, the last thing I'd also just start thinking about is, well, how can you make your current touch points better? Um, whether that's bill sends, whether that's service calls, email campaigns, how can how can we make sure that um, people feel like they're getting the, the best service. How can we cross promote cross market? Um, and, you know, I think last but not least, how can we ask for those referrals and those reviews that are going to impact how we get new business? Um, because I think that's you know, going to be really, really important as we, we grow our businesses. So, you know, I think right here, you know, the key takeaways as we look at it, I think just in general, you know, hey, customers really like deliver uh, fuel markers. Uh, fuel markers are providing really great um, customer service, and they're they're retaining those customers um, for for a long time. Um, you know, the ones that um, aren't are the ones that aren't um, providing very good service. 
Um, and then that's when folks look for price um, and look for lower prices. Uh, if you're gonna build a marketing strategy, I'd focus on referrals first. When can we make those asks during the a delivered fuel process? Um, can we do that during customer service calls? Do we do that after we make a successful delivery? Um, do we do that right after we close on, on a new business or set a tank, right? Um, ask for referrals, ask for reviews. They're gonna be a lifeblood of, of new leads coming into the door. Uh, tank monitoring services could be of interest, right? If you have tank monitoring, think about services, right? What can you provide um, to customers? And even if you're gonna give it to free to customers, um, let them know that they have it so that they feel trusted, um, that it, it works as a retention tool for them. Um, you know, I think in general, um, if you're looking at it, you know, happier customers, we, we saw that, you know, people that uh, providing transparency in terms of their tank level, in terms of their delivery schedule it, is a real good reason for people to recommend that customer uh, and that fuel supplier to, to other potential customers. And so, you know, make sure transparency is going to be really uh, important. And, you know, let's see how can we communicate with customer more than once a year or the once a year that they actually think that they're getting uh, communicated with. And then I think last but not least, email is here to stay. Um, you know, I think when we look at this, I also could probably see that the communication method around mobile is going to increase as well. Um, and so, you know, how do we, you know, shift um, some of it to email, um, start capturing email addresses, but also, you know, think about that that mobile piece, that SMS piece, that, that might be a good communication method um, going forward around alerts and, and everything around that. So. Um, you know, that's going to be a big thing. So just in general, um, a little bit about us before we end, and then I'll get to any other questions. But, you know, hey, we're a tank monitoring company. Um, where we really differ is, you know, we really want to help your business grow. Uh, we want to provide a seamless experience that gets monitors out there quickly, uh, that provides actual data on your accounts. And so, like, how are you doing with being efficient on um, XYZ uh, customer um, and, and being able to actually really dig down on a customer by customer level. Uh, and then last but not least, you know, create a really good experience with transparency with mobile technologies that allow you to really see and, and capture uh, referrals uh, with folks. Um, you know, if you're interested, feel free to reach out and uh, we'd be happy to discuss a little bit of how we're different um, and you know, how we can actually help your business. Thank you, Chris. Um, I <clears throat> have had a couple questions come in here. I'll start off with the first one, which is um, a general question in regards to the, the 450 people that were surveyed. Were any of the survey questions asked around companies that only deliver, that only offer delivery services, services versus companies that offer both delivery and full HVAC services? Uh, no, there was no questions around that. We focused on the kind of delivered fuel, just uh, experience in general. Um, you know, that, that could be something that um, we add into um, uh, next year as well. Uh, one question we did ask is, um, you know, when we looked at, you know, who do you choose, um, uh, was asking if other, they provided other, uh, the fuel supplier they chose provided other services. So that's where it kind of might come in, but we didn't, you know, really subset that. Okay, but but it was possible that some of the respondents, you know, had a company that that not only delivered propane or heating oil, but they also offered HVAC services. Is that is that yeah. fair to say that that's a possibility? Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely. A possibility. Uh, okay. Um, when we say price, is it just fuel? Is there any data regarding customers that leave due to higher service department costs? Um, yeah, so so we left it general. Um, you know, I think just in general, um, you know, I think there was, when we looked at price, it was more, more so like, yeah, the, the cost to the customer. Um, and so that's how we we um, kind of look at that um, versus kind of customer service as, as the, the other aspect. Um, 
you know, that being said, you know, we, we left it open-ended for that reason um, for the buckets. Um, but, you know, we, we could probably read into it a little bit. Um, and we also got some, you know, one-off answers that um, are, are, can be interesting when we look at kind of write in of why. Um, so we would be happy to share some of that as well. Okay. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna read this verbatim here. Okay. So I am wondering in terms of customer acquisition and retention, how much of a difference does it difference does it make when if a customer whether a customer excuse me. Okay. So basically is there does is there a higher amount of retention if um, if it's a delivery only company or if it's a full service company, and what I mean by full service company is you know they offer HVAC services and, and additional services in addition to delivering the the fuel. I'm not sure if that's something that you guys yeah uh, looked we, at at all in your survey, but just you know, that's the general question. Yeah, you know I I think um you know I I think that's a, a good suggestion on on uh, including kind of like HVAC and and other things um, into that. Um, for this survey, um, we didn't look into that um, fully, right? Um, we, we had, you know, some questions on, on why you chose. Um, as far as the retention is concerned, I, I would say, you know, just in general, we saw a lot of people, um, you know, stay with their fuel supplier for, for a lot of years. Um, so I, I think retention in general is really good. Um, you know whether uh, HVAC and other services also um, improve that. I, I I would assume they do, um, but um, we didn't. We don't have hard data on that. Okay. Um, at the moment, that is all the questions that we received. I'm going to give it a couple more seconds here. Um, we will. Anyone that's attending this, you will receive a an automated message tomorrow morning at 9 a.m with a replay of this webinar. And as Chris mentioned, we will also include a link to download their full uh, delivery fuel report. Um, at this point, since we don't have any other questions, we're gonna wrap this up. And Chris, I would like to thank you for presenting and for your time. And thank you everyone else this morning that joined us. Um, I hope you all have a good day. Thank you. Yep, take care, goodbye.